boy, am I glad you showed up. I mean, I did do a lot of DD for information to share with you. It'd be a shame if you didn't come. I'm John Zadar. This is Wednesday, July 27th, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that everybody else is talking about or are ripping on the charts or have headlines. This is news I've read over the last few days on the otcmarkets.com website, right where we're at right now. The information comes in here constantly, so you can keep up with it pretty easily. But if you don't get a chance, there's a lot of news that I've read over the last few days. Oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. But as I said, it's only OTC, and we do look at penny stocks too. And penny stocks can be on any market. They consist of any stock that's under $5. So there's a ton of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. Now, when I do my research on OTC stocks, actually any of them, I start here all the time, otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site because it's never outdated. The uh, SEC and FINRA update this site every single day for all 12,482 securities. So why waste my time running around the internet or even going to Google, sorting and searching through old, outdated information when all they have here is the current information? Make your research easy. It'll be a lot more fun. Just start here. If you can't find what you want, then go searching for it. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. I'm going to refresh this page, make sure our numbers are all current. Egads, they are. Oh, man, I did not notice that. That is a very low low on our dollar volume, 1.3 billion. We just saw uh, 1.4 the other day. That is her normal low that is a new low. So I am sad to see it get down that low. Though, honestly, I don't see the dollar volume really make the market act any differently. But of course, the less money that's coming in, the worse off it is. Speaking of less coming in, we only did 8.7 billion shares today. We are under that 10 billion. We need to get over that, folks. Under 10 billion is very anorexic. That's the best way I can put it. There's just not enough food to go around. Trades, geez, we're under 250,000. So it was a very slow day on the OTC market, which would explain why I saw the kind of stocks I saw running today. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but you've really got to look close to see why they're running. So what we're going to do actually is just look at the current market this link right here will bring you over to this page and if you come to the advancers right here click all and then click more you get this page now i have to admit this is one of my most favorite pages on this site this is updated every 15 minutes so it's not live but it's really pretty close to being accurate and what this does is show you all the gainers of the day on the otc market by percentage gain biggest at the top and you can just keep going all the way down to the very very bottom what I really like about this page particularly is they give me a piece of information that I have a hard time finding anywhere else online and that is the number of trades that the stock has made now I like to equate these numbers to people if I see five trades well I know there's no more than five people there and there may be less but when I see numbers like 98 or 786, I get excited. How many people do you think it took to make 786 trades? Well, if everybody did two trades, which I don't think they did, you're over 350, 380 people looking at this stock. So the more people you have, the more price action you're going to have, the better chance you're going to make of making a profit. So I love this page. This is what I primarily come here for. And you can come here any time of the day. It doesn't really start until about 10 in the morning, roughly, a little earlier maybe, and there's not gonna be a lot here. It will be right up until that moment, and you're gonna see a lot of single digits, just like you do now at the end of the day. This is a total tally. Well, look how many have just single digit amount of trades. So if you come over here at 10 in the morning and you see something with 10 or 20 or 49 trades already, you may want to go see if it's got a catalyst. That may be a stock to consider. Not always guaranteed, but that's a darn good tip-off. So we're going to look at the stocks today that everybody was looking at. And my line is basically 100 trades. And I actually got five stocks here. So we can't dilly-dally. We're going to be looking at PHCG, which I talked about yesterday. She did 300% gains, another day of strong gains. 1.3 million shares with 98 trades. EBML, 
176% gains, 39 million shares removed, and she did have 786 trades on her today. Coming all the way down. Now, I don't want to go too fast. I mean, you can look here and see what's going on. All these stocks did have big gains. Some of them had some pretty decent trade numbers in here. You may want to come back here and look at these. But as I said, I had to draw a line somewhere, so I drew it over 100. SVSN, 79% gains, 8 million shares, 441 trades. There aren't that many trades for nothing, and that's what we're going to be looking for. What's the reason so many people were looking at these? BMXI did 71%. 3.9 million, another 400 trades. And PLTXF, 48% gains, 1.7 million shares, and 109 trades. And you can just keep going. You can find more down here. I am just drawing a line somewhere because, well, we've only got so much time and there's a lot of stocks here. So we're going to go take a look at those five right now. We're going to be taking a look at these stocks in the same order that we just saw them on percentage gains at the top. So we're going to look at the biggest gainer first. This is PHCG, Pure Harvest Corporate Group, Inc. Finished today at $0.04 cents with 300% gains. She's on the pink tier now, and she has a verified profile and a transfer agent. I'm always telling you to look for those green ticks because there's more information that's been verified behind the scenes for us. So verified information is always good, especially on a pink. Now, this company did real good today, 300% gains, that's wild. No, what's wild is what she did yesterday. She had a high of just under 5,000% gains. Finished the day yesterday at 1,566% gains. But here's the story behind that gain. She got pulled off the open market on the 21st of this month, just a few days ago. I don't know why, but she was off the market. Now, when you go to the expert market, which is where they went, your shares cannot be sold in the open market, so you and I cannot buy them or sell them. However, they can still be bought and sold by marketers and brokers. And for whatever reason, they annihilate the price when it gets over there. And this thing had a decent price. I am not sure exactly what it was, but they took it all the way down to the triple zeros. I saw it at triple zero two, then I saw it at triple zero six. Now, I'm not too sure what it came back on the market on yesterday is when it came back on the market. Well, it normally jumps back up to its normal price when it comes back on the market because that's the value of the company. So if it comes back at triple zero nine and its average price is two cents, it's going all the way up there and it's going to be a huge cotton picking gain. And that's what we had yesterday. And I pointed this out in my video yesterday. I said, keep an eye on this. It just came back on the market. Not sure what it's going to do, but there was a lot of push on it today and we got more. Now that's nowhere near 5,000%. But wouldn't you be happy with the 300% gain? Sure you would. What was the relative volume around this company? Not bad, 68,000 to 1.3 million. I think you're looking at about 180 times her normal volume. I may be wrong there, but I think that's right. Share structure. Ah, boy, we got a nice share structure here. I was expecting a real big one. Unrestricted shares is where I go to get the float. You can go to the float. It may be right. It may not. It may just be outdated. I always stick with the unrestricted shares. Then you're always right. So we got 19.4 million. Not a bad float at all. Financials for Pure Harvest. Well, they are making money for cotton picking sake. At the end of last year, they made $2.5 million. Take those three zeros, throw those behind. Had to put out some good money for it, so they ended up with about three quarter million dollars at the end of the year. Quarterly, they doing anything here recently? They are, they did about a half a million dollars the last quarter and only had to put out 92,000 for it. Whoa, gross profit, 516. Well, this was uh, something I'm not aware of. They got some extra money from somewhere, which ain't a bad thing at all. Extra money's good. So financially, they're not looking bad. Uh, we've got all their financials in. Everything looks good and nothing new here in their SEC filings. So really, all you have is what I told you and that chart. So let's go take a look at that chart. Any guesses which trading platform we're using? Hey, that's right, Tommy. It is Thinkorswim, better known as TOS. If you like it, you can get it absolutely free. Not mine. Go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account, keep your account open, and boom, you got yourself a free trading platform to use anytime you like. 
So we are looking at PHCG six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here of almost 30 cents and a low of triple zero two, which is when she was on the expert market. She has been way down below that 200, is now getting a wee bit close just now. First attempt in six months. She's been under the 50 hard, so she hasn't had a lot going for her. Technicals just here in the last few days when she's gotten back on the market have all kicked. And it was, let's see where the date is here. Here's the 18th. She was trading and there's the 19th. The 21st is when she got yanked off the open market. And look folks, her price the last day on the market, not the aftermarket hours, which we can't trade OTC anyways, she closed at 1.6 cents. And when she got onto the expert market, it fell to triple zero two. That's what I'm talking about. Just annihilate, obliterate the price. I don't know why they do that. But when it comes back on the market, it has to be at least triple zero one, the basement. It can't be any lower than that. Imagine when it comes back on the market at triple zero one and your stock was 1.6 cents. You're talking uh, just under 10,000 or is that 100,000% gains? It's a huge gain. So we look for these to come off the expert market, but there is no information online. There's nobody to tell you this stock's coming off expert to the open market. It, you, you just see it. So, I mean, you really have to be holding a net when the fish comes out of the water and know exactly where it's gonna be, which is almost impossible. In saying that, I have found one site, RE Filings. I think it's refilings.com. They have a service where they bring you all sorts of information that you can't get everywhere else, like all court documents. Lots of court documents make stocks run because you hear of custodial ships, of uh, shares being erased, all kinds of stuff before any press release comes out, if there's a press release at all. Well, they also tell you about changes in tiers. When a stock changes and moves up or moves down, they let you know in advance. So just knowing when a stock is going to move from expert market to market to open market, boy, that could be worth the investment right there. Technicals, as I said, are super strong since she's come back on the market on the 26th. Boom, she is flying. Let's take a look at that 20 day. Zoom in a wee bit more. So she was only off the market for a couple days and I don't know why. I have never seen a stock go on to the expert and come back on that quick. She flew yesterday, as I said, and you really can't see it here, but I do want you to see the uh, technicals. Everything is pushing up, 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 up. Since this run has started, nothing is cooled off yet. Five day, five minute. So there you are. You are at triple zero two. Now, I don't know exactly what the price was it looks to be somewhere, well, somewhere near triple zero two or thereabouts. And we got all the way up here. I'm looking right there. We got all the way up here to 3.9 cents. This was like 4,980% gains. And then it fell away down here and ended the day at 1,566% gains. Pointed it out to you yesterday. And this morning she jumped again. You had a little while to get in here. You know, you see some volume and then a big poke came in here and shot her up again. And she was up to six cents starting here at uh, two cents. So yeah, 300%. Well, it says she ended at 300%. Well, if she started at two and went to six, that's 300. She's down here at four. So I'm not quite sure where she opened up at, but again, this was a powerhouse today. And I showed yesterday she had kept way more than 50% of her gains. Actually, she was right at it. She was above it most of the day, fell down to 50%, and it just bounced off of it. What I'm talking about is drawing a line between the beginning of the surge and the top of the surge. I'm looking at this one here. And then I find the center. And I look for the stock's price to have not gone anywhere below the center. I mean, maybe a smidge, but it hangs around that line. Let me get rid of these lines. Well, the same thing here. We've got the beginning of the surge right there. Top of the surge is the high bubble. Split it in the middle. I'm trying not to look at anything. I don't want to line it up. I'm just trying to find the middle right there. All right. So she has gone up, thrown away 50% of her gains, which is okay because that means she kept 50% of her gains. And that's a sign of a good gain. And she's sitting right there, sitting right on that 50% mark of the surge, which is where I want it to be, no less. 
So it looks like she's ready to start moving again. Technicals, yesterday's technicals in the five minutes did not look good. The one hour and the four hour were blazing. Uh, this looks like yesterday's, looks a little cool. The only difference is, is our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is on the top like the MACD. But I like this little push right there. I like her sitting on the 50 day. I just keep my eye on this. She's giving away money. You got anything against that? The next biggest gainer on that list that we were looking at is ticker EBML, E Bullion Inc. They finished today at 0 0.0188, just under two cents, with 213% gains. Now they're on the pink tier, but limited information. This normally means they're late on a filing, and to tell you the truth, that is what this is all about. They were late on filings, which is why they are here, and if you're here too long, they'll yank you off and they'll put you down at the expert market and give you time to get your filings caught up. Or you can just do it now and save yourself the hassle, which is what it looks like they've done today. And they were talking about that on Twitter. It's the only thing I can find. So this company seems to work with gold. They sell gold, they have prices for gold, but when you look at their news, I know I'm out of order here, but there is no current news. There's nothing since 2016. And I haven't done a deep dive on this company. I'm really looking for the reason everybody else is looking at it. Why is it running today? So what was the relative volume around it today? Pretty good. She went from roughly 2 million to 43 million. So you're looking at roughly 20 times her normal volume just on this simple uh, filing that came out. No catalyst. People like to see their stocks pink current. Share structure. We got almost 100 million in the float, 97.5 million. Not a great float, but it's not going to break anybody. Financials. Well, they haven't had any money since 2019 on the annuals. And quarterly? No. So if they're working with gold, they're not making any money doing it right now. They need something. And that's not what we're looking at today. We don't see any deals, acquisitions, or reverse mergers on the table. Just a simple filing. And I'll show that to you right now. So here's an attorney letter that came out yesterday. An attorney letter must be included whenever you put in an annual report. Now these are disclosures, they are not 10Ks, they are not 10Qs. What's the difference? 10K and a 10Q is certified. You have a CPA look at them. They're actually audited numbers. Disclosures, the management gives them to us. They look at their stuff and they give us numbers. I'm not saying that they're being dishonest, but it's not what they do for their forte. It's not their specialty. So we just gotta take their word for it. So what they do give us is an attorney letter. An attorney looks it over and he doesn't say everything's right. He just says it all looks legal. And then he puts that in there and you have to have that with an annual. And that is what they just put in here on the 25th. And then they followed it up with the attorney letter. And I see that brings them up to 2022 March. I see they have their quarterly here for December. And I don't know if they've actually need June's. That has already passed. So really, maybe they're jumping the gun. This may not be the last piece. If they don't need June's right now, this should get them to pink. But if June's is still necessary, they're going to have to put in June's quarterly before they get to pink. But in either case, this is all I found about this company. It's the only type of catalyst out there. And it's the only thing they were talking about on Twitter. Let's go take a look at that chart. As always, we're going to start off with our six-month, four-hour view for EBML. Looks like we've been here before. I can see my line started way back here. Obviously, we looked at it at the beginning of a surge. And boy, she ran for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. Whoa. I hope you guys caught that one. I don't remember talking about it. This was all the way back in May of this year, which isn't all that far back, actually. And she started her run here at about a penny four and went up to just over five cents. So you're looking at over 300% gains over like nine days. And it took like three days to throw it all away. She's just been rolling across the floor here, hitting that low of 0031. And then today she launched. And funny, she's hitting this line where the beginning of the surge started on this. She's just tagged into that. She has pulled back a little bit, but there is a lot of volume there. Technicals are strong. They are picking up and pushing up very quickly. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. 
So there's absolutely really nothing going on until today. We do see there was a slight push up yesterday when the filing came out. And then today it has been nothing but climb. And the technical shows she is still burning up. Five day, five minute. All right, so here's yesterday right there. We did have a nice steady climb yesterday and she ended nicely. And if we had solved this yesterday, we'd have probably had a clue that something was going to happen today because that's a steady climb without any pullback, just like we got today. So why would you expect it to fall tomorrow? That's not a crazy surge. It's not a, a, a straight shot to the moon. No, this is a nice rolling uphill incline. She finished the day at a high, still had strength. I can't say the technicals are great, but they're still warm. They definitely aren't cold. All of our SMAs are rolling nicely. She had one break off of the 10 here, looked desperate about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon when they were talking about the interest rate price hike. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but we're in the zone. And then she just went back to work. And I think she's probably going to do something more tomorrow. I can't guarantee that, but for two days now, she's been picking up momentum and steadily inclined all day. So at least put this on your watch list for tomorrow. EBML doesn't have to have a catalyst to run. If it's running, you can still make money on it. We're now going to take a look at the third stock that was on that list. This is ticker SVSN, Stereo Vision Entertainment. Now, of course, I've already done preliminary DD on these stocks, so I knew where we were going when we got here. And I can tell you right now, this company does not have a catalyst. Not today. There were no filings. I couldn't find any tweets. There's no new news, but she is running. All I could see was news that's being built up on. They came out with the news press, a memorandum of understanding in May. They made a deal in June and they expanded on that deal here in July. And when you look at their finances, they need something, something bad. So that's the only thing I can see coming together. Maybe you'll see it too. So they finished the day at just about five and a half cents with almost 80% gains. They're on the pink tier in current and they got those precious green ticks I tell you to always look for. So they look good here. Now this is a Nevada public company. They are based out of Las Vegas and they say that they are utilizing their award-winning team of industrial professionals in the areas of climate change mitigation and multimedia. I don't know anything about the multimedia. I see the name there, which suggests that. But the news, the news is all about the climate change mitigation. So what was the relative volume around the company today without any direct catalyst? Holy cow, not bad. That's like 120 times their normal volume. 51,000 to 8.2 million without a catalyst. Share structure. That's not bad. Our float is about 46 million. We can live with that. Not bad at all. Financials. Well, they weren't making anything until June of last year. They did $3 million, got to keep all $3 million. And recently, well, they haven't made any money since. So they made nothing up till that point and after that point. So they definitely need something to happen. No doubt about that. Disclosures. We know their financials are current because they're current and they've got nothing new here under their SEC filings. So let's just jump on over to that news. Now, they've got news going back a while, and I didn't do a deep dive. I was just trying to find what is going on with this stock today. And I found this piece of news, Climate Cure Capital signs binding partnership memorandum of understanding with Vision 2050 Forestry to generate carbon credits with 5 million trees on 25,000 acres of their Ghana plantation. And then here, it says that they basically closed that deal, and I want you to see that one. So they tell us here that, Climate Cure Capital Corporation, a stereo vision wholly owned subsidiary, announced today that they had signed a 50 year partnership agreement with Vision 2050 Forestry to maintain and generate carbon offset credits from a 25,000 acre, 5 million tree forest in Ghana. With 200 million trees, VTF is one of the largest private plantation owners in Ghana implementing carbon credit projects towards sustaining and enhancing the environmental, economic, and social benefits of forestry and agriculture. Now down here, they say it a little bit differently. They just told us it was 50 years here. Down here, they tell us that per our agreement, Climate Cure Capital will calculate and trade the carbon credits sequestered by the 5 million trees and receive half of the annual revenue generated from their sale 
for up to 100 years. The other half of the carbon credit revenues from the 5 million trees goes to the farmers and the landowners in VTF's consortium. Now, obviously, they own more than just these trees because they say they already have 200 million trees. However, when you jump over to the last piece of news that came out on the 14th, we see that same 200 million number a month later mentioned in the press release. Climate Cure Capital Corporation announced yesterday that they had completed an agreement with Ghana's Vision 2050 Forestry to expand their existing 100-year 25,000 acres to 500,000 acres and their 5 million tree carbon sink project to 200 million trees. So they've made their deal bigger, but they mentioned in the press release in June that they had 200 million. Now, did they already know that this deal was going and that just kind of slipped out? Because this is the first time they say they've actually gotten control of it from this group. Or is this 200 million plus some more that they've got? Deeper Dive will give us more information. But I'm interested in the chart now. Let's go take a look at that. Our charts are looking better and better, if you ask me. This is ticker SVSN, six-month, four-hour chart. And would you believe our high bubble was today? That's our high bubble. Our low bubble was five days ago at just a smidge over a penny. And right now, we are just under six cents. So in the last five days, this stock has virtually done 600% gains. And that's really what taking two days off, as you'll see looking at the charts. Our technicals are blazing, folks. They are red hot. We are overbought on the RSI, tsunami on the MACD, and both the ADX and the PPO are skyrocketing. Everything looks super good. Volume was very nil until the low bubble came into effect. Then we started having steady volume, and today the volume just ripped. Without any new filings, any new news, no catalyst. 20 day, one hour view. Whew. So she hit that low bubble, and as I said, right here, she climbed here, had a jump, took a day off in the middle, climbed another day off, and then climbed. So you had to be patient. And I know it's tough to do with OTC stocks because gains don't stick around. But here's another one that is steady climbing over the last, well, how many days is that? That's been for the last seven days. She's been steady climbing, and the technicals are great. Fantastic. Love them. Five day, five minute. Oh, look at that, folks. It is just gorgeous. And again, we had strong four hour, strong one hour technicals, but the technicals on the five minute are not good. I'm not worried about the ADX falling, not too worried about that. Now, what you got here is the MACD falling and the price is not falling. So we're starting to get a divergence because normally the price and the MACD follow each other. When they start doing the opposite from each other, that's a divergence. And when they start spreading apart, you can kind of think of it as like a mouth opening on a fish. Things can come in. You could actually grab some gains. So this is a, a decent thing that the MACD is falling and the price has not. Our RSI is tempted right now, but we still are on top of our PPO here. Just like the MACD, you want the blue on top of the pink. Just got a 50-day SMA into the picture here, which is always a little concerning to me. When a new SMA comes on the board, oftentimes we see the price just gravitate right to it, wherever it is. This did, it looks like it may have tried right there, a little bit of homage and nice to see you, bud, and back to work it went. So we've got a nice steady incline here. I don't need to draw a line there. You can see that. But let's put that line in there. I'm going to roll it right across the bottom here. Right across the bottom. You can see how she is pretty much staying in that line. Bouncing across that line across the top. And she's testing it again right now. So we would watch for it right here. We do see our 20 is trying to work her way down. We had a little bit of volume there. All we can say is that she has a trend. That is definitely a trend. The trend is our friend. You can count on that more so than not, but a trend has to end sooner or later. So we're gonna watch for this, especially since it hasn't got a catalyst. If you see this thing start to move, you may wanna consider a position, folks. I'm not pushing this stock because I don't see any catalysts and I don't understand how they're gonna make money off of those trees. I understand what carbon credits are. Carbon credits can make you a lot of money, but how much do they get? When do they get them? How do they qualify for them? 
What country is going to give them these carbon credits? That is all the questions that need to be answered because they got no money. We need money. And those financials stink and they didn't give us any dollar signs or even uh, time targets for when money would be coming in. So, yes, it is running. I don't see any reason for it to be running without any value on the table. What do you think? Fourth stock on that list is BMXI, Brookmount Explorations. Now this is a mining company. And normally I don't look at mining companies just because they're not my cup of tea, but they are kicking butt right now. When I go looking at the news, I actually have to look for news that is not about mines. That's how much mining news there is right now. And BMXI did have news. It didn't come out today, it came out yesterday, but it was pretty important news as far as they're concerned. So they finished the day almost at nine cents with 60% gains. They too are on the pink tier and they got those green ticks. So everything looks good. Now they tell us that they are an operator of producing gold properties in Republic of Indonesia. The company currently operates two gold producing properties. Now that's my thing. If I'm going to do anything with the mining company, I want them to be producing not exploring, looking for the stuff, actually pulling it out of the ground already. So they should be making money. So what was the relative volume around the company's old news? One day. Not bad. Wow. Jumped from 109,000 to 3.9 million. A pretty big jump. Share structure. We need a low float. And we've got it. Asking ye shall receive. 7.5 million. Under 10 million. It's a super low float. And you know, it's surprising because I normally think mining companies are going to have a ton of shares. And to my surprise, I find a lot of them have very low floats. So this is great. 7.5 million. All right, let's see if my inclination is right about the money. Oh yeah. Wow. At the end of November last year, they had done 14 million for the year, had to put out about 5 million, got to keep about 10 million. Not bad. How about recent? Yes. Their last quarter in three months, they did $4.5 million in three months. Had to put out 1.5, got to keep a little over 3 million. So their producing gold mines are producing gold. Disclosures, got anything new over here? Financials are gonna be current and they've got nothing here at all for sec filing. So let's check out that news. All right, so they do have lots of news here. Uh, nothing really jumps out but the news that came out yesterday. So let's jump into that. This came out the 26th of July. Brookmount Gold Corp, a Nevada incorporated company, is pleased to announce that it has reached agreement on the acquisition of an additional property on the Alaska US side of the Tintina Gold Belt where the company acquired its Moosehorn property in the Yukon, which is in Canada, last year. Completion of this transaction will represent the first acquisition by Brookmount in the United States and signify an important milestone in the company's North American investment strategy. So you've got a gold mine company that's making money and just got another one in Canada and today or yesterday they've got their very first one in the United States and maybe that gives them some Benefits, relief, tax advantages, I don't know, but they seem pretty excited about it. So let's go look at that chart and see if there's anything more it can give or if that was it for the day. Looks like an atypical OTC chart to me. We got our high bubble back here of 44 and a half cents and our low bubble on this side of just about two cents. And right now we are just under nine cents. She has been under the 50 most of this time, let alone the 200. She had one attempt getting close and then today she actually hit it. It is only the news that's got her moving. Nothing was going on before that. She had two days of jump, broke the 200, but has pulled back. But the volume is strong, technicals are strong, and a wee bit of pullback on the RSI. 20 day, one hour. She's been under the 50, hit a low bubble, rolled up to the 50 and rolled right back down. The news is the only thing that changed anything here. And we've had two days of jumping. Hasn't been very easy, but she is making her way up. She is now definitely above the 200 on the one hour chart. Technicals are strong. We do have that pullback on the RSI because of the drop right there. Five day, five minute. All right, so she's been having to work at this. The news obviously came out early yesterday, had a very quick jump, 
that jumped from three and a half cents up to eight and a half. So that was like 150%. And then it fell back. Looked like it was going to die. Broke the 50. Went way underneath everything. And then at the very end of the day, we had a pop. Came back up just a little bit. Pre-market, aftermarket shows it had a lot of life still in it. And then it surged as soon as the bell went off. And this time she jumped from five and a half cents to 12 cents. You're looking at over 100%. And then she tapered down back to the 50. And of course, if we look at the surge marks, top and bottom of the surge, cut that in half, eyeball into here about there, we are right there. So she went up, came down under the 50, discussed it a little bit, came back up, and right now is sitting on top of the 50% line. As long as you're above that, I'm confident. She's also sitting on the 50-day SMA. Now this is pushing down right now. This is definitely a test. All of our technos are cool. Our four hour was strong, our one hour is strong, but the five minute looks a little iffy. Let's look at that one minute. So it was the very last minute she pulled back to bounce. It looks like she's doing that over and over again and climbing. Each time she throws down that stump, she pushes up a little bit higher. And here comes our 200 day haul. A lot like the 200 day SMA, which has just also appeared. Woo, we got a lot going on here, folks. I'd watch this tomorrow. I don't know what's going to go on with all these new SMAs. I would think, just a guess, I would think this would drop to the 200 and then bounce. Then bounce. That's what I would predict. But hey, what do I know? Watch it and see. All right, we got one more stock to look at. And finally, the last stock we're taking a look at, fifth on the list of the most highly traded stocks on the OTC market. Remember, all these stocks virtually had hundreds of trades, which means they probably had hundreds of people mulling around them today. So this is ticker PLTXF, Plant X Life. Finished today just over four cents with about 55% gains. And unlike all the other stocks we looked at, she's on the QB, the middle tier. You have to audit your financials to be here. So they're not going to give you disclosures. They're going to give you 10 Ks and 10 Qs with information you can invest on. They have the verified profile and the transfer agent. So they look real good. But wait a minute, there's more. Cha-ching! We got a bonus here, folks. This is penny stock exempt, which is great news. This means they are not a startup company anymore. They're not risky. Now, yes, they are still four cents. They are on the OTC market, but they're not considered a penny stock because they meet the criteria. The criteria says that you have to have been in business for three to six years with no problems. Your filings always have to be current and you have to have millions of dollars in the bank during that time which they've done. So they no longer have to follow all the rules of the OTC market. They've proved themselves trustworthy. That's a solid company to invest in. So what does this company do? They tell us that Plant X's platform is the one-stop shop for everything plant-based. With its fast-growing category verticals, the company offers customers across North America more than 10,000 plant-based products. In addition to offering meals and indoor plant deliveries, the company currently has plans underway to expand its product lines to include cosmetics, clothing, and its own water brand. So they're doing quite a lot. And they did have news come out today, and the news was directly about the price of the stock and what this company does. So I'm not surprised to see it run. What was the relative volume around that news today? Well, not a whole bunch. She went from roughly a half a million to 1.8 million. So she did get a little bit of attention. Security details are float. Not too high, not too low. It's pretty much an average float in there. 176 million. Financials, are they making any money? Well, their last annual was March of last year. They did $5 million then. Quarterly, uh, at the end of December, they did $2 million. And they're pretty much doing between three and $2 million regularly. So they are making money steadily. Disclosures, got anything new over here? No, we got no filings whatsoever. So let's just go jump on over to that news. Now they do have a lot of different type of news here. I didn't do a deep dive. I only read the one piece of news that had it running today right here. Plant X receives bullish research valuation from Capital Y Management. 
So this is the news that came out today, July 27, 2022. Plant X Life today announced that Capital Y Management, a New York-based hedge fund, has issued an independent research report on Plant X, referring to Plant X as a market leader with a disruptive business in an emerging industry with long-term tailwinds. Capital Y Management has established a 12-month price target of 67 cents per share, which would represent an enterprise value of Plant X of approximately $68 million. Now, this is all Canadian. Now, what that basically is, is a price target. And when a reputable analyst or hedge fund gives a price target, people listen to it and they push the price right up to that price target. Not to it, but right close to it. Now, I did a conversion on this to find out, and I go to their site, but they keep locking me up every time I go there. 67 uh, Canadian cents comes down to 52 American cents. And you can see right now we are at 42 cents. Now I'm kind of curious, did she hit 52 and pull back or is she still gonna try to push to it? Let's go see what that chart says. PLTXF, oh goodness, looks like all the other charts, right? We got that high here of 32 cents and a low of two cents. She's been under the 200 all this time. She's been trying to fight it, but boy, she had a very heavy fall here in the last couple of months. And you can see the volume has been increasing over the last couple of months, getting stronger and stronger. And today she was very strong and has pushed herself up to that 50 day SMA. She's still a long way from the 200, but you gotta get on the 50 before you can get to the 200. Technicals are definitely showing signs of strength and we got a crossover looking like it's about to occur on the PPO. We would love to see this get on top of the pink pointing up. That would be great. 20 day, one hour view. Yeah, just falling downhill without any regard to anything or anybody. And then yesterday, she started to climb. She had a small climb from two cents to uh, three cents. So she had a 50% gain. Today, she went from three cents to four cents, uh, four and a half cents, another 50% gain. 50%, 50%. It's been steady incline, no doubt. Technicals on the one hour look very strong. They look quite good, as a matter of fact. Five day, five minute. So yesterday's was a pretty good jump. She actually got on top of the 200 and sat up there most of the day, refusing to come down. Today she jumped way up here and it looks like she is over her 50% mark, which would be a good sign. Uh, right about there, sure is, look at that. So she is above her 50% sitting on the 50 and the 200 haul, above it. Technicals. We got a crossover imminent on the MACD. RSI is pushing up, and right now the there it's starting to come up. This actually looks like it's about to give some more, folks. Looks like it could give some more. And if we look at the chart behind us, let's just look at that 10-day. Oh, we're gonna have to go a little bit further than that. How about the 20-day again? All right, so right here you can see before she started to fall strong, right in this area. And that's where she was trying to push to. And then you're going to get another one up in this area right there, which will put her over the 200 and up at six cents. So we could see another 50% jump out of this. Yeah, 50, 50, 50. All right, we got through all five. We don't usually look at five stocks. That was a lot of work, it seems like. But you can see what was running today, why they were running why people chose those stocks out of all the stocks out there god only knows that's what dd does it gives you a chance to follow what people are following and that's where you want to put your money because if they're investing in it then you've got a chance to get some of that remember folks dd isn't supposed to be hard it's supposed to be a treasure hunt the more you know the more you're going to grow see you folks